Shark girl. Thank you. Um, okay, I am Caroline. I'm a senior. I'm in Katie. Oh. Um, so I'm going to share a story. I think it's hard because when I think about my testimony, I think about like six different versions of it that I could give. Like I could give the testimony of like when I was saved. I could give the testimony of like when I um, like really started walking with God. I could share a testimony about like the ministry that I've seen him do in KD. Um, but I think that I have felt the Lord call me to share a part of my story that's like the season that I'm currently trusting in him. Um, for right now and so um, that's just kind of like with my future and so I want to share a bit about that. Um, I think that my story this that I'm sharing is like one of personal surrender and so um, when I was a senior in high school I wanted to do elementary education and I met a speech pathologist and was like oh this is a better idea. I'll do this and I remember I got this little um, black lab guide dog and I put it in my room my apartment freshman year and I was like whenever you think you want to change your major you look at this guide dog and you don't change it because we have this great plan and it's comfortable and we're gonna make money and the one speech pathologist you met was happy and you're gonna be happy but you have to stick to the plan and so I know my tendency to get excited about things and change my mind and so I had this little guide dog to remind me um, but I felt that God was calling me to surrender that plan that I had because I was comfortable in it and I was finding my identity in this, like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. And so when he called me to surrender that, I remember as sophomore year in my NKD in my room, and I called my parents and I was like, I think I have to change my major, but I, I don't know what I want to change it to. And my dad's like, well, you can't be exploratory forever, so like you got to pick. And I remember crying and I had Discovery Channel playing on my room, as I often do. And if you know me, you know I love sharks. And I was just like crying to my parents. And I was like, I can't explain it, but like, I just love sharks and that's what I want to do. And they're like, what, what happened? And so I changed my major to sustainability and I, I felt that season of like God asking me to surrender the plans that I thought I had. And through that, like saw the coolest things, like I took scuba diving class at UF and I intern at a garden now. And like, I'm taking classes that I genuinely love. and that wouldn't be something that I would be doing if I didn't surrender the plan that I thought I had. Um, and so in this season now, I feel like God has taken me through these little baby surrenders. Um, I truly believe that when I surrendered my whole life to him junior year of high school, I it was like a promise of like, I will surrender my life to you. And then he's been like taking me up on it ever since. And like, that's been my journey of like walking through like, okay, you said you're going to surrender your whole life. What about this area that you're holding on to a little tight? Okay, yeah, I surrender. And it's like this process of surrender. And so this season, senior year, has looked like throwing around different ideas. Like, what am I willing to surrender? Because saying that you surrender your life to Christ and him taking you up on it are kind of different. And so him, the process for me looks like, would you surrender a year interning stateside with crew? It's like, okay, wrestle through that. Like, support raising would be hard. This would be weird. What if, like, who am I in Gainesville if I'm not KD? Like, th there's all these things that I'm like, well, did you think about this, God? And finally coming to terms with, like, okay, I'll surrender that. And then the question was, would you surrender a summer in Thailand to preach the gospel in a nation that is primarily Buddhist and they don't know about Christ? Okay, well, so again, support raising and then overseas, and this is scary. And then I finally surrendered it. Um, and that journey obviously now has led me to God asking me to surrender a year, knowing him, it probably will be more, but like a year in Thailand or overseas in Asia, serving him and stinting. Um, and that's like a really scary call. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I do. I did mean it junior year when I surrendered my life to him. And so getting to say yes to that. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm at right now. But I wanted to share really about like the season that I was in during that period of surrender because I think it's super easy to point to someone and say like, well, they know what they're doing and it's easy for them. Like that girl who is always on the microphone for some reason at Dulas, like she's going to Thailand and that makes sense for her because it's that just makes sense. And it's easy to like point fingers and think that those things are easy for people when you're on the outside. But um, I kind of just wanted to come up here and like unpack my mess of like, no, this is not easy. Like, this is hard. Um, and I remember like 
there was a week last semester where I felt so alone and like, I, I just felt like the spirit had left me. And I was like, this is so weird. I've never not been confident in my faith before. And I was raised in a Christian home and there wasn't a day that you could ask me where it's like, well, what do you believe? And I'd be like, I don't know. I just, whatever, doing my thing. Like I always was like, no, God loves me and God loves you. And that was never a question. And so I had this week where I was like, I don't know up from down. Like I have no idea what's going on. Um, and I remember I would call Ashley and I was crying. I was like, I don't know who I am if I'm not a Christian. And I was like weeping to her because I was thinking about my non-Christian friends. And I was like, well, like I'm the one Christian that they know. Like if I'm not a Christian, who are they going to talk to you about God? And Ashley's like, well, if it's not real, it doesn't matter. And I was like, well, I still care about, like, I, there was still this burden for the, for the loss that I had, even amidst, like, significant doubt, where I was like, I don't know what's going on with me. And so I realized during that season that, like, God was calling me to surrender my confidence, because I realized that my confidence wasn't in God. It was being confident in God. And so I had, like, taken this, I've always known this, and that was my, my, um, my thing that I was holding on to was like, oh, I've always known this, or like, I've always wanted to be a speech pathologist. Like, that's the thing that I was holding on to was my confidence. And so I realized that, and coming out of that season of doubt, it was so significant to really figure out what I had placed my hope in. Um, and so I remember during that season where I, again, like, didn't know up from down and was like, I don't know what my salvation means, but. I remember being like playing this little game with myself where I was like, okay, if it's not real, then don't move to Thailand to tell people about it. And then I just felt this like every time I played that game, I would just burst out into tears and be like, but no, like they have I have to go, they have to know about him. And and so amidst that doubt, I still felt this calling. And that's kind of like what I wanna say. And like um, that's my thing that I'm super confident in now is you can't have a calling unless there's somebody calling you. And so even in my worst day of like, I don't know what's going on, I was like, but I'm going to move to Thailand and I'm going to tell them about God. Like, it doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Like, moving to Asia doesn't, isn't a career step for me. Um, but it makes sense with God because he's called me to that. And so I just want to say, like, you don't surrender your life to Christ once and then you just like skip on a path and everything's fine. Like you wrestle and you figure it out and you're gonna doubt one day and your feelings aren't gonna match up with your faith one day. And those things are okay. And it's okay to be happy and sad at the same time. And you can hold different feelings. Um, so I just feel like during that season, I was like, why don't people talk about doubt enough? Cause I know we all struggle with it. And so just to comfort you guys, it's like, wrestle through that god is real um and those feelings aren't aren't louder than him even though sometimes they feel like they are and so i think that now i am in this place of continual surrender like i said you don't surrender once and then you never have to surrender everything again when i have if i have a kid one day i'll have to surrender them and then when she like if she goes on a first date i'm gonna have to surrender her again and it's like every moment of your life, you're surrendering it to him. And like yesterday, I found out that the team that I thought I was going to join in Thailand might not be in Thailand. So the game's still going. Like you're always going to be surrendering. Um, and so I just want to say that like God is so good and he has called each one of us to something so big. Um, and I think for me, the coolest thing about the calling is like your calling might not be overseas and that's okay your calling might be to steward this like relationship really well or like be obedient with what God is calling you to surrender. And I think if you just allow yourself to like dream for a minute of like, what would it look like if I was obedient in this area that God is calling me to surrender? For me, that's moving to Asia, which is like crazy. And I'm still like, what are we doing? But for you, it might be like a relationship that you need to repair or something that God's calling you to surrender. And I think that if we did that and we went into it, like you'll see that God cares a lot more about that thing that you're holding really tightly than you do, and it's better for him to hold it. Um, and so I just, I say all that to say like, lean in to the calling that God has for you, because you think about the entire 
like God created everything and everyone. And he one day whispered and like leaned into me and was like, Carolyn, I have a really cool plan for you. Like that, I could cry. That's so beautiful. Like he has that for every single one of you. And sorry, this always happens. But it's just like, I don't want to miss it. It's so cool that like God has designed us. And he's so personal and so intimate. And he's like, JR, I have a really cool plan for you. Juliana, I have a plan for you. And like getting to obey that and like, be faithful in that is the best thing that we could ever do, and you won't regret it. So, anyway, that's all. <laughs>